Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody So I am Dr Pushpala Take Professor and HOD of Anatomy JSS Medical College JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research Mysore So today we will discuss about the midbrain anatomy okay. why studying the gross anatomy of midbrain is important so the, today's session we will discuss the midbrain so we'll discuss about the gross anatomy of the midbrain okay why do we need to study the midbrain anatomy so here is an history a 50 year old female presented with sudden onset onset of left hemiplegia with double vision and right squint okay so after this session we will understand the anatomical basis of this uh, signs and symptoms of this patient okay learning objective for this session is describe the external features of midbrain describe the internal features of midbrain at the level of superior and inferior colliculus Describe the connections of midbrain and describe the blood supply of midbrain. Describe the clinical anatomy of midbrain and discuss and describe the anatomical basis and effects of Benedict's and Weber's syndrome. What is the need to learn this midbrain is? Okay, the midbrain serves as an important transporting and functioning center for motor and sensory activity particularly the movements of the eye in synchronizing with auditory and visual impulses that is when somebody hears you turn your head and see so that is this coordination of the head neck movements with the eye and ear activity so this coordination takes place in the midbrain okay so the midbrain it connects the forebrain with the hindbrain okay the cavity of this midbrain is the cerebral aqueduct okay so this midbrain lies in the infratentorial part okay and this is connected with the cerebellum through the superior cerebellar peduncles okay and it extends from the posterior commissure of the third ventricle to the superior medullary velum okay and this aqueduct connects the third ventricle with the fourth ventricle okay so this is the midbrain and the uh, cerebral aqueducts as acts as a line of demarcation because anteriorly it is called the uh, peduncles and posteriorly this is called as the tectum now coming to the anterior view how we see what are the features we see in the anterior or the ventral aspect so you can see there is a two large bundles of fibers called as a cerebral peduncles they are separated by a deep fissure okay and you can see appreciate here the deep fissure is narrow near the pons okay and it widens as it is diverging and enter into the cerebral hemispheres okay and this uh, the this crust cerebri or the cerebral peduncles forms a posterolateral boundary of this interpeduncular fossa. So, this interpeduncular fossa is a space in the base of the brain. So, this forms the posterolateral boundary. And we can appreciate here on the medial aspect of this peduncles, there is oculomotor nerve emerges, and on the lateral aspect, the trochlear nerve is emerging okay so here you can appreciate so this is the crust cerebri okay so this crust cerebri is crossed from above downwards you can appreciate here is the optic tract and there will be basal vein then posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery okay so between this posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery we can appreciate the oculomotor nerve and the laterally trochlear nerve coming out okay so the same thing when you see on the posterior aspect okay you can see the two pairs of uh, elevation okay so that is the superior 
colliculus and inferior colliculus separated by a cruciform sulcus. Okay, and this superior uh, colliculus is connected to the lateral geniculate body through the superior brachium and inferior colliculus is connected to the medial geniculate body through the inferior brachium. Okay, so and we can appreciate the trochlear nerve winds around to reach the ventral aspect. So, this is the only cranial nerve which is coming from the dorsal aspect of the brain. Okay, then it reaches the ventral aspect. Now, let us see. So, we have studied the gross anatomy, the external features. Now, let us study once we cut the structures what we see. Okay, as I said, the anteriorly, okay, the this is called as a cerebral peduncles. So you can appreciate here in the brain here, and the posterior, posterior to the cerebral aqueduct is the tectum. Again, this cerebral peduncle is divided into anterior part is the crus cerebri. So, this crus cerebri is the one which continues as the basilar part of the pons and the pyramid. Okay. So, then dorsal to that what we see there is a darkened area. Okay. So, the pigmented area it is called as a substantia nigra. Okay. Then dorsal to that what we see is the tegmentum okay, and posterior to the aqueduct is the tectum. So, from anterior to posterior when we see the internally when you cut the section of the midbrain you see anteriorly it is the crest cerebri, substantia nigra, tegmentum and tectum. Okay. Now, let us see what is the structures which is there in the crest cerebri. Okay. So, the crest cerebri the lateral one sixth Okay, this part is uh, the temporopontine fibers are running through this part and the medial one sixth we see the font pontine fibers. Okay, so here in the lateral is the temporopontine and medial is the frontopontine fibers. Whereas the middle two third, okay, you see there is a corticospinal and corticobulbar fibers. So, this corticospinal fibers are the one which runs in the basilar part of the pons as well as it goes into the pyramid. This corticobulbar fibers they enter into the uh, midbrain from the internal capsule that is through the genu of the internal capsule then it enters the uh, middle part of the crust cerebri of the midbrain. Here the fibers are arranged Okay. So, here the head, the fibers which are coming from the head are most medial and those for the leg are the most lateral one. So, head medially and the leg laterally. So, according to these fibers are arranged. Next coming to the substantia nigra. Okay. So, as we can see it is this is the darkly the pigmented area. So, it contains the pigmented sheet of nerve cells. Okay. And this is extending from the cranial border of the pons to the subthalamic region. Okay. And here you can see the ventrally there is a serrated okay, head that is projects into the crust cerebri. Okay. And here the ventral part it is very less pigmented and it is called as a pars reticularis. This is made up of a large multipolar neurons. Okay. And this is the which receives the reticularis is the one which receives the information and this is rich in iron. Okay. Whereas, the posterior part, okay, it is the uh, uh, dorsal pigmented and very compactly arranged that is called as the pars compacta. Here, the dopamine is secreted mainly in this region and it is made up of a medium size and the small multipolar neurons and this is the sole output is from the this uh, compacta. Okay. So, this is the substantia nigra. Now, let us see what is the importance to learn this uh, connections of the substantia nigra. So, this substantia nigra is connected with the uh, corpus striatum okay, and the thalamus. So, this connection that is between the substantia nigra, corpus striatum and thalamus. Okay. So, they help in the smooth and skillful performance of a volitional act. Okay. So, this is for the skillful uh, performance of the act, this connection is necessary. 
okay that is the nigrostriel fibers they inhibit and prevents the tremors here whereas the the strio nigral fibers they inhibit the neurotransmission in the substantia nigra and the dopamine which is produced here in the this is from the substantia nigra goes to the striatum okay so what happens if there is any uh, this dopamine is reduced here then the uh, patient can come with a parkinson uh, tremors okay so that is why this substantia nigra is very very important that is connected between the substantia nigra striatum and thalamus is very very important okay so now so till now what we have studied is the midbrain okay it is has the dorsal surface and the ventral surface it connects between the pons sorry the forebrain and the hindbrain okay and here you can see it forms a posterolateral boundary of the interpeduncular fossa okay and here you can see that oculomotor nerve emerges from the medial aspect and trochlear nerve is from the lateral aspect okay and in the cut section from anterior to posterior we can appreciate the crest cerebri substantia nigra tegmentum and tectum and the cavity of the midbrain is the cerebral aqueduct okay here in the crest cerebri the lateral most is the temporopontine fibers middle two third is the corticospinal and cortico bulbar fibers medial one sixth is the frontopontine fibers now let us see so we have studied the crest cerebri and substantia nigra ne let us see what is the structures at the tegmentum okay so there is a two levels one is at the inferior colliculus one is at the superior colliculus now at the inferior colliculus so what are the structures we see here is one is the here you can see in the periaqueductal gray matter in the anterior aspect you can see the nucleus of the trochlear nerve okay and in the lateral aspect you can appreciate the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve so this mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve is, uh, is it carries the proprioceptive sensation okay and the trochlear nerve is the only nerve okay the only cranial nerve which is crossing over and coming from the dorsal aspect okay all the other cranial nerves are ipsilateral only this is contralateral which crosses over okay and we can appreciate the nucleus of the inferior colliculus okay so this inferior colliculus is for the here so now the white matter so just dorsal to the substantia nigra you can appreciate the whatever the fibers which are coming from the pons that is the medial lamniscus trigeminal lamniscus then spinal lamniscus and lateral lamniscus this medial lamniscus carries the fibers from the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus so in the medulla it is oriented sagittally as it's coming through the pons and the midbrain so they are sagittally oriented the cuneatus fibers are medial and the gracilis fibers are lateral and the lateral to that we see the trigeminal lamniscus from the trigeminal nerve spinal lamniscus is the continuation of the lateral spinothalamic tract and the lateral lamniscus is a continuation of the auditory pathway you can see here it is ending at the inferior colliculus okay then here in the median region we can appreciate the decussation of superior cerebellar peduncles okay so this you can see the superior cerebellar peduncles the ascending fibers from here goes to the thalamus and the descending fibers goes to the reticular formation in the pons and the medulla okay in the median region just in front of the uh, central gray matter you can appreciate the medial longitudinal fascicles so that carries the fibers from the vestibular uh, nuclei then the tectospinal fibers and rubrospinal tract okay so this is the median region okay now let us see what are the structures at the tegmentum at the superior colliculus level okay so here in the superior colliculus level we see the nucleus of the oculomotor 
nerve okay and and the lateral the periaqueductal gray matter we can appreciate the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and there is an appearance of the red nucleus at the superior colliculus level okay and we see there is a just uh, in front of the just uh, superior colliculus we can appreciate the pretectal nucleus so this nucleus is important for the pupillary light reflex now coming to the white matter at the superior colliculus level so the same uh, which continues here that is the in front of the substantia nigra there is a red nucleus and lateral to that we appreciate there is a medial lamniscus trigeminal and spinal so the lateral is already disappeared with the inferior colliculus level here we see only the three lamniscus okay and in the uh, center we can appreciate there is the ventral and dorsal tegmental decussation this ventral decussation of foral okay it is the decussation of the rubrospinal tract and the dorsal decussation of manet is the decussation from the uh, tectospinal tract that is from the superior colliculus so these are the we see ventral and dorsal decussation okay and here you can see there is a reticular formation is seen here okay so this is the what are the white matters what we appreciate at the level of the superior colliculus now let us see the what is this red nucleus okay why is this red it is called as a red okay it is almost 5 millimeter okay and it is present at the tegmentum just dorsal to the substantia nigra this is appears little pink or red in the section this is because it is rich in iron okay and this has got a two parts one is the caudal part it is a magnocellular part and this little older and it has a multipolar neurons okay and the superior or the rostral it has got a parvocellular part it is recent in uh, appearance and is made up of small neurons okay and why studying this red nucleus is important is it forms the important nucleus of extra pyramidal system okay and this is has a main influence of the flexor muscles and also this helps or monitors the cerebellar function on motor system now what is the connection of the red nucleus okay so then red nucleus is afferents are from the cerebral cortex that is the motor area 4 and 6 okay and from bilaterally it receives and from the cerebellum through the uh, the from the cerebellum you can see that the dentate nucleus and the globus is also it receives but it is from the contralateral side okay so but from the cerebellum it is a contralateral side also it receives the fibers from the corpus striatum okay and the tectum but whereas the efferents it is got connected with the uh, they all the all the this efferents they form the ventral tegmental decussation what we observed in the previous slide okay so they go to the spinal cord okay that is the again it is a contralateral because they are the output fibers or the efferents one they decussate and go to the spinal cord contralateral side and also to the cranial nerves 3 4 5 6 and 7 and also to the inferior olivary nucleus and also to the reticular formation and also it goes to the thalamus so it is connected with the cortex cerebellum thalamus the uh, striatum okay and also spinal cord so you can observe that it is connected with most of the parts of the brain and here you can appreciate here that is the it receives the information from the cerebellum via the cerebellorubral fibers and it sends inhibitory impulses to the ipsilateral olivary nucleus okay so this is considered as a relay station and helps to maintain the harmony in the execution of the movements okay and this is the rubrospinal tract okay so this is essential for controlling the motor activity it is largely the crossed fibers it is present in the lateral gray column of the spinal cord okay and it is terminates on the interneurons in the spinal cord this controls the distal limb muscles 
it stimulates the flexors and inhibits the extensor. So, that is why studying the red nucleus with its connection is important. Now, till now what we have studied is the midbrain has a dorsal surface okay, and the ventral surface. In the ventral surface, you can see appreciate the crest cerebri on each side. Okay, on the medial aspect, the uh, trochlear nerve is emerging and from the lateral part, the uh, sorry, from the medial part is the oculomotor nerve and from the lateral part, the trochlear nerve is emerging and you can see there is a groove which is uh, uh, narrow near the pons. As it is diverging, entering into the cerebellum, this widens. Okay, and in the cut section, we can observe from ventral to dorsal, the crust cerebri, substantia nigra, tegmentum and tectum. Okay, and here at the uh, crust cerebri, lateral fibers are the temporopontine fibers, medial most are the frontopontine fibers, in the middle is the corticospinal and corticobulbar spine uh, fibers. Okay, and here at the level of the inferior colliculus. Okay. So, we can appreciate in just in uh, dorsal to the substantia nigra, the four laminiscus are arranged coronally. Okay. And in the center, you see decussation of a superior cerebellar peduncles. Okay. And in the gray matter, what we see, there is the nucleus of the trochlear nerve. Okay, and the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and we can see the trochlear nerve emerging and crossing over the dorsal aspect. And at the level of the superior colliculus, okay, so the lateral laminiscus is not seen, the other three laminiscus are seen because the lateral is, you can see it is ending near the inferior colliculus and here you appreciate the nucleus of the oculomotor nerve and the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and pretectal nucleus. So, this is for the pupillary light reflex and in the center we can appreciate the decussation, the ventral and dorsal decussation of the tegmentum we can appreciate. So, now we have studied the crust cerebri, substantia nigra and tegmentum. Let us see what we see at the tectum. Okay. So, this tectum is just posterior to the cerebral aqueduct. Here we appreciate the uh, quadrigeminal body that is the two pairs of colliculus superior and inferior separated by the cruciform sulcus. Okay. And this is derived from the dorsal lamina of pre-aqueductal gray matter. Okay. So, now let us see what are the connections of the inferior colliculus. Okay. So, this is a inferior colliculus is an important relay station in auditory pathway. Okay. It is connected to the superior colliculus. So, this is very, very important because this connection is the where it helps in turning the head and eye towards the source of sound. So, that is this connection between the superior and inferior colliculus is very, very important. Okay. And also it is connected to the opposite inferior colliculus through the commissural fibers and it is connected to the a nucleus of lateral laminiscus through the lateral laminiscus. It is also connected to the superior olivary nucleus and fibers from the inferior colliculus through the inferior brachium connected to the medial geniculate body. From here, it goes to the auditory cortex. Okay. So, this connection of uh, inferior colliculus is very, very important because this is the main pathway in the auditory system. Now, let us see what is the importance of the superior colliculus. As we know, this is the superior colliculus is concerned with the visual reflexes. Okay. So, this it receives the communication from the retina. Again, this helps in turning the head and eye towards the source of light and also closure of the eye. So, this connection is from that that is a retina is very very important okay and this uh, is connected to the lateral geniculate body through the superior brachium okay and also it is connected the superior colliculus is connected with the visual cortex okay that is the and from there it is to the superior colliculus 
then through the tectospinal and tectobulbar connection. Okay, so this is helps the where it is connected with the third, fourth, sixth, and the eleventh cranial nerves. So this is very very important because it helps in the accommodation to the near objects with the reflex uh, movements of the head and eye in a scanning movements. So as soon as you see something, you will scan. So this connection is very very important for that. Okay, and also it is connected to the uh, brain stem that is to the and also to the cerebellum also it is connected to the inferior colliculus and to the opposite superior colliculus. As I said there is a connection between the superior and inferior colliculus is very very important because to turn the head and see towards the sound and towards the right reflex and connection with the cranial nerves again it makes a very very important for the coordination of the movement. So now we have studied what are the important gray matter and the white matter. Okay, so now let us see what is the blood supply to the midbrain. Okay, so it mainly receives okay the from the basilar artery through the posterior cerebral artery, then the superior cerebellar artery, okay, and the posterior communicating artery and the choroidal arteries, the anterior choroidal artery. So these are the four main four main arteries that is from the basilar artery supplies. Okay. So, here we can appreciate the again it is divided into median territory that is the paramedian branches of the posterior cerebral artery which supplies. Okay. So, the this area is that is the paramedian region is supplied by the branches of the posterior cerebral artery. So, what are the structures here present is the red nucleus, the medial part of the substantia nigra and the medial part of the Cerebrae. So, to know this which is the area and what are the structures present helps us to locate the lesion if any patients comes with a history of involvement of these structures. Okay, so, this is the area where it is affected if this artery is damaged. Okay. Next, the lateral territory. So, this area the lateral territory is by the quadrigeminal artery of the posterior cerebral artery. So, here is the posterior cerebral artery. So, this gives a branch that is the quadrigeminal artery. So, this supplies the uh, lateral area. So, what are the structures come across here is the both the superior and inferior colliculus, then the periaqueductal gray matter, okay. Then there is a medial laminiscus uh, and the lateral part of the substantia nigra and the lateral part of the crest cerebrae. So, this is the uh, lateral territory okay then there is a superior cerebellar artery okay so this is the superior cerebellar artery okay so this again also supplies the superior and inferior colliculus okay so the venous drainage from the midbrain mainly goes into the cerebral and basal veins this is the blood supply now why this uh, clinically it is important to study the midbrain. So, we have studied there are so many nucleus, so many connections. Okay, And this is the most uh, commonly involved in the traumatic injury. Why? Because it is the one which ascends through the small rigid opening in the tentorium cerebelli and it is more vulnerable to the traumatic injury. And also it is more common site for tumors, hemorrhage or infarcts. And also, if there is any uh, blockage of the cerebral aqueduct, again that leads to pathology into the midbrain. Okay. So, here we can appreciate here there is a called as a Weber's syndrome. So, what happens in this Weber's syndrome is, so there is occlusion of the posterior cerebral artery. So, what happens if the posterior cerebral artery is occluded? Okay. So, here because this it supplies the uh, paramedian region right so there is an alternating oculomotor hemiplegia so what why it is affected because you can see there is oculomotor nervous emerging at this place so and also the crust cerebrae is affected so there is a uh, contralateral hemiplegia and the contralateral face and tongue due to damage to the crust cerebrae and ipsilateral deficits in the eye motor activity and pupil dilatation. That is because involvement of the oculomotor nerve and pyramidal the crust cerebrae involvement. So, this is called as a Weber's syndrome. So, here mainly affected is the 
posterior cerebral artery the uh, branches is affected and that is leading to these symptoms and leads to Weber's syndrome. Another syndrome is the Benedict syndrome where there is a necrosis okay, it's involving the medial lamniscus and the red nucleus. You can appreciate here where it is there is a necrosis involving the medial lamniscus and the red nucleus. Okay. So, what happens if this is damaged? So, this causes a ipsilateral again you can see the third nerve is coming out. So, ipsilateral third nerve lesions and a pupil dilatation, contralateral tremor, chorea and uh, athetosis. Okay. So, this leads to a syndrome called as the Benedict's syndrome. Okay. And so, here there is a you can appreciate the rubral tremor. It is a coarse tremor in the upper extremity when the person is at rest. Okay. Posture or intention. So, the tremor at the rest or any posture or in the intentional. Okay. Then the Claude syndrome is where the ipsilateral third nerve contralateral tremor, ataxia and there is a incoordination okay? that is called as a Claude syndrome okay? and the Perinod syndrome where the lesion is at the superior colliculi due to the compression by the pineal gland tumor. Okay? So, here what happens there is a weakness of the upward gaze and vertical nystagmus. So, we know at the superior colliculi again it is the third nerve is damaged. Okay? So, now let us discuss what is this case what we have studied at the beginning of this session? A 50 year old female presented with a sudden onset of left hemiplegia with a double vision and squint, right squint. Okay, you know the left uh, hemiplegia is mainly because of the involvement of the corticospinal tract, double vision mainly because of the superior obliques that is superior oblique means at the level of the inferior colliculus and the right squint. So, this is that is why the studying the anatomy of the midbrain helps to localize the lesion. Okay. So, now to summarize, so we have studied the midbrain external features. Okay. So, in the ventral aspect you can appreciate the crust cerebri. Okay, and they are diverging from the pons towards the cerebellum and it forms a boundary of the interpeduncular fossa. Medial aspect you can appreciate the uh, oculomotor nerve and the lateral aspect you can see the trochlear nerve. Okay, and uh, the cut section you can see in the anteriorly it is the basis pedunculi okay, and posteriorly is the Tectum, okay. Here you have the there is a crust cerebri, substantia nigra, tegmentum and tectum. Okay. Then at the level of the inferior colliculus, we can appreciate uh, dorsal to the substantia nigra, medial, trigeminal, spinal and lateral lamniscus. And in the periaqueductal gray matter, we can appreciate the nu nucleus of the trochlear nerve, mesencephalic nucleus. Okay. And in the ventral aspect of the median region, we can see the decussation of the superior cerebellar peduncles. Anterior to that, we can see the rubrospinal tract. Posterior to that, we can appreciate the medial longitudinal fasciculus and tectospinal tract. And we can also appreciate on the lateral aspect the reticular formation. And the trochlear nerve is the only cranial nerve which comes from the dorsal aspect and crosses over goes to the contralateral side. Okay. Now, at the superior colliculus level, okay, so we can appreciate the three lamniscus that is the medial, trigeminal and spinal. There is appearance of the red nucleus okay, and the ventral and dorsal decussation of the tegmental decussation is appreciated in the center gray matter. You can appreciate the oculomotor nerve nucleus okay, and the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and appearance the pretectal nucleus that is for the pupillary light reflex and we can appreciate the uh, superior colliculus. Okay, and the main blood supply to the midbrain is by the uh, branches of the basilar artery that is the posterior cerebral artery, posterior communicating artery, then the superior cerebellar artery. So, these are the three main arteries which supplies along with the anterior choroidal artery. Thank you.